Our destination on Dining Down Under says what it offers, a feast. You'll find it up on the central New South Wales coast, right on Avoca Beach. Come and meet Andre Chauvin and his team of chefs as they work their magic in the kitchen. Welcome to another episode of Dining Down Under. I'm Vic Cherikoff. Benjamin Christie. And Mark McCluskey. And we're visiting Avoca Beach on the central coast near Terrigal, north of Sydney, a restaurant called Feast. This is a real special event today because what Andre, the chef Andre at Feast is doing is actually using his traditional French training working with seven chefs in the kitchen as well. That's a lot. And it's a lot of chefs. Fair way. Uh, but what they're all doing is literally applying those traditions of French cooking and really working interesting food. So we're taking Andre's influence, taking a few of his, his ingredients and adding our own little twist to it. So Ben, what are, your, what are you up to, mate? I'm doing today a wine-drenched lamb with mountain pepper mash. Mouthful different? there, mate. Sure is. Okay. <laughs> Simple as that, we'll come back to that. And Mark? Well, I'm gonna start off by curing the barramundi with a salt mixture, a sugar mixture, and then highlighting it with lemon myrtle. Lemon myrtle being a rainforest leaf, similar to lemon, lime, and lemongrass. Okay, and barramundi is also known as Australian sea bass. Or lungfish. And a lot of white fish that have a fairly uh, dense texture, when they're raw, really lend themselves to salt curing. So we'll, uh, we'll play around with that. You can also uh, salt cure crocodile, alligator, a whole host of uh, that type of uh, seafood. Sure um, can. I'm doing one of my favorite desserts, which is a wattle seed pavlova, done up like a Swiss roll. So some, from some very basic ingredients, we'll have um, uh, with egg white, we're actually making it almost a meringue base to it. So rather than just sugar and egg white uh, and, and, and baking that off and making it a, like almost a crisp meringue finish, we're taking it to a much softer meringue so that we can roll it in a Swiss pan uh, application. And we're flavoring the, um, uh, the, the, the cream in the pavlova with wattle seed. Now, just a, uh, we'll push a few clues on that as well. The wattle seed in the cream is really good when it's done the night before. So we'll show you uh, how that comes together as well. Meanwhile, have a look at this show. Feast restaurant right on the beach at Avoca. Have a look at some really fine dining. There are many elements to this dish from the potato garnish on the tomato and zucchini rosette to the quality lamb backstrap fully trimmed and ready to cook. It may appear to be an ordinary ratatouille, but each component is skillfully cut to uniform pieces, which adds to the mouth feel when it's eaten. It's this attention to technique which transforms simple ingredients into an eating experience and which keeps seven chefs busy in the kitchen when the restaurant is in full swing or there's a function to cater. It's time to assemble the artwork. A mould is used to give the dish height and visual appeal. The ratatouille is packed in. Then the lamb gets the attention. It's seared in a hot oil pan then finished to medium rare in the oven. While all this preparation has been going on, the rich lamb jus has been reducing, gets intensified with cream and the secret ingredient, mountain pepper. As with all meats, it gets rested before it's sliced to reduce the loss of juices. This makes the Australian lamb the best it can be. Tomato rosette completes the centerpiece. The 
mould has slipped off. Then the dish is sourced as the finishing touch. The dessert is another form of food as art, and the chocolate mousse with its own chocolate cup gets a cream foam. And naturally, you couldn't have a cappuccino without the sprinkle of chocolate. Then all the other elements are added, a wafer spoon and there's a biscuit handle for the chocolate cup. The anglaise is decorated with a few drops of coffee liqueur and feathering makes it something really special. And there you have it, the finished dessert with that all-important wow factor. How was that food at feast? Pretty good. So here's whipped cream, and I did say that it's best overnight, but uh, with uh, the magic of television, we're going to uh, shorten our overnight and do it instantly. But the beauty of this, it's worth knowing that you can leave it overnight, and the fact that it's going to intensify overnight. Wattle cream, and this is wattle seed in an extract form. So it's the powdered seed of acacias, roasted, and uh, then extracted, or boiled if you like. But as this is taken through to a slightly, I'm going to make it a slightly darker colour, the wattle seed works as a stabiliser and stops the cream from splitting uh, or separating. If you overbeat it, sure, it'll still curdle. But the, uh, the great thing about wattle cream is once you've got a whole batch made, you can keep it in the fridge, it'll last as long as the, fr the um, cream doesn't sour. But um, literally it's a matter of just going through. And I like my wattle seed pavlova to have a fairly rich wattle flavour. It's a fair amount of cream here. So... So what's the ratio, Vic? Well, literally, as long as you've got the flavour you like, that's the ratio. I keep colouring it up to a coffee colour. So season coffee to and taste cream, pretty much. Coffee and milk or white coffee. So that's fine. Great. Okay, and you, with the pavlova, we'll make it a little bit thicker. It's now getting to a stage where we don't want to overbeat it, otherwise it will curdle or it'll, um, it'll start to go to butter. That's fine. Okay, so that's ready and I'm going to start making a few noises here as I whip my egg whites, add a little bit of sugar um, and uh, stabilise the mix as well with some corn flour, arrowroot and a little bit of vinegar. That's going to make my meringue, soft meringue finish. Over to you, Mark. Vic, what I'd like to do is with the, the, the barramundi, I'm going to cure it. Now that involves adding a salt mixture and a sugar mixture together. We like to add some aromatics, some herbs, some spices to that. So we'll add some lemon myrtle, as mentioned before. We'll sprinkle in about 50% sugar on one side, turn it over, 50% sugar on the other side, 50% meaning equal ratio of sugar and salt. And the salt there, turn it over, salt again, and a bit of lemon myrtle just for a touch of flavour. Well, a lot of flavour, but there we go. Put that and on. You could also add a little bit more right at the end. You can. So we do that. the aromatics. It's worth mentioning also, Mark, that um, storing the herbs, the, uh, in fact all herbs, in the freezer is going to increase their shelf life. Along their life, definitely. And one of the best things to do with this now, we've got the sugar, we've got the salt mixture in there, it's going to draw all of the moisture out of that. So we put a pan on top just to assist that process, speediate it, if you like. Yep. And we'll put that in the fridge. And you could even put a heavy weight on it, house brick or something, you try could. and press the liquid, and don't forget to drain the liquid as well. That's right. So that goes in the fridge. We'll come to that and back to that in about six to eight hours. Benjamin. I've got a lovely lamb loin here, and it's boneless. I've taken the bone off it. Just cleaning up all the sinew and bone that's left out, because when you cook it, it can, tends to shrink up and, and look really ugly. You want to keep, keep the, uh, the meat as straight as possible for presentation purposes. So we're just cleaning that sinew out. And the more you uh, trim it, the better eating the quality anyway. And the tenderness of it. Quality, yep. It's beautiful. I'm going to score the top of it very quickly. That's, once again, presentation and also allowing the fla flavours to get into, into the lamb itself. So, just so how f you're just literally just scoring, just not scoring, even going all the way through Just scoring, running the knife over that. the top. Yep. We'll put that on there. I'm going to season with some of the wildfire Spice mix, which I guess is pizza in a, in, a, in a can. In a bottle, mate. In a bottle. 
and we're gonna wine drench it. We've got some red wine just over the Can top. Can you use any, any red wine with that or does it have to be a specific type? Well, to go with the wildfire, I probably use Shiraz, a bit peppery. A bit peppery notes. Oh, that's what brings out the flavour. Totally. Excellent. So we'll leave that in there for about 20 minutes and then uh, we'll put it in the pan while, we, while that's marinating. Got some chopped potatoes here into the, into the pan. Cold water start. A little bit of seasoning. And go from there. That sounds pretty noisy up there, Vic. Yeah, mate, just whisking the egg whites. We're getting there. Same guys love you, mate. <laughs> so again, the idea here when we're um, making uh, pavlova or whisking eggs with sugar, in fact, any time you're mixing sugar with either egg whites or whole eggs, you want to make sure the sugar's fully dissolved. Uh, you really do need to uh, make a good emulsion of both the uh, egg white and the sugar. While that's going on there, I also have to prepare the um, topping for my pavlova. So what I use a little coffee grinder, and just a, a, a muesli mix. It's um, Usually the fruits don't break up, you can pick out the fruits, but that's enough there. Make plenty of noise in this segment, this is great. Drown out the other guys. All I'm trying to do is get a rough kibble. Sorry mate. Sorry, I can't hear you. <laughs> and I'm all, this is possible here now, I'll just show you in the bowl. It's just a coarse chop, I can pick out some of the um, fruits there. I'm going to scent it with a little bit of lemon, sorry, aniseed myrtle as well because I reckon that's a great flavour and um, I'll turn that off while we finish this segment. Well now the barbecue is hot I thought I'd start by putting the lamb, lovely lamb loin onto the barbecue, quite hot and it'll probably take about 12 or 14 minutes in all. We want it medium, approximately medium. Now with the marinade that's left over, I'm going to be using that in the sauce. So we'll go back and do that now. Sizzling away. Sizzling away. Just uh, over to uh, preparation of the pavlova. Just a baking tray, a little bit of grease proof pa or baking paper, silicon paper, and my whipped egg white gets dumped on and then spread as for a, um, a Swiss tray type a little lick of the fingers because it's sweet and then this just gets spread out actually it's often a good idea to put a bit of spray oil on the uh, between the tray and the paper just to make sure that it doesn't uh, it holds the paper on the tray And it'll rise a little bit as it cooks. We're going to bake this off at 160 degrees, 150 degrees, which is, uh, is it gas mark one, is that right? Around about gas mark three. Oh, around three, yeah, that'd be right. Maybe even two and a half. And it will slow down a little bit and drop at the end of it, but that's okay. So is there a, is there a point of where it rises that you know to take it out, Vic? Well, it's more a, 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 a feel. What you're looking for is a bit of firmness to touch when it comes out of the oven. You might get a little bit of bubbling over the surface of the, um, of the pavlova, but um, you don't want to cook it to browning. Okay, so that's it there, and that's gonna go into the oven, and over to you, Mark. Well, I th what I thought I might do is cook a bit of pasta. One of the best ways to cook pasta, I believe, is to put it, get a nice hot pan. Now with the pan, when it's nice and hot, the best thing to do is use some leftover pasta. What I'll do is I'll go to the fridge, grab some pasta, heat my pan up. There we go. So we drop a bit of oil in there. There's nothing better than crunchy pasta. This is almost like um, the Chinese and the Japanese do baskets with noodles. This is very similar to that. So it's going to be really crispy, is it? Really crispy on the outside. And we're going to use our all-purpose seasoning, the wildfire spice. It works really well. This is a native mint pasta, so you've got your mint notes in there. This has got the, the paprika, the tarragon, the thyme, the lemon aspen, 
and I can go on. A whole bunch of flavours. It has. You could do this, um, turn this into a pizza as well if you wanted to. A bit of cheese oh, on the base. You could use it as a pizza base. That's a good idea. Base. Very good idea. Pasta pizza. Pasta pizza. Novel idea, mate. So we'll do that. Just throw that around a little bit. It's coming along nicely. And then we'll throw in a few vegetables. There we go. There we go. And what I'll also do is just pull out of the fridge. I'll get out of your way. The barramundi we put in there a bit earlier. See how that's coming along. While you're doing that, I'll just uh, show you how the pavlova looks. This one's a little bit brown as it uh, prepared beforehand because that's going to take about 20 minutes to do. And um, what we need is a clean tea towel, our finished pavlova mix, and the biscuit crumbs that I made up before, or muesli crumbs. And we simply top this, because it's going to end up as the top surface of the pavlova. Yell out, guys, if you've got anything uh, yeah, well. that you want to draw attention to. But once this is done, I might even, uh, I'd love a drum roll, because it's going to have to be flipped. <laughs> no worries. What I wanted to mention, actually, Vic, is if you can just have a look at this pan here, we've got the barramundi in there. The barramundi has just started to release some of the juices. That means it's just about ready. The best thing to do is just take it over onto a paper towel, give it a bit of a wipe. You can wash it if you want, but I really don't think it needs it. You want to leave some of the flavour on there. So just dab all the moisture off there, and that's pretty much ready to serve. I am about to, on a clean tea towel, flip my pavlova and take the cover off. Didn't hear a drum roll there. Didn't hear a drum roll. Didn't even hear a murmur from the audience, but that's okay. Just one uh, clue, if your grease proof doesn't come off, you wet a towel, put it in the microwave to hot, put it on top, and then you'll find that it will come off quite readily. So I'm ready to spread my cream over there and finish the pavlova, and over to you, Benjamin. I'm just finished mashing all my potatoes out. I like to uh, to put a lot of butter and a lot of milk into my mashed potatoes. Some people just like to, to crush them up, but I like the creaminess that the butter and the, the milk brings to it. And also you could, you could possibly use a cudra, a um, bit of ground bush tomato, that complements potato quite well. I'm going to be putting the, the native, native pepper leaf into the, uh, into the mash as well, and that's going to give it a, a little bit of spicy flavour. Yep, yep. Goes in. So while we sit there, this is the wattle cream that I uh, prepared earlier and you notice that it's, uh, it's fairly well whipped and a beautiful brown colour. Oh, I'll just leave Let that there, that, thanks. Right. And again, handling it fairly delicately because you don't, it, first off you don't want to knock the air out of the cream and secondly you don't want to work the pavlova too hard either. You guys pretty much ready for... Ready to go Vic. Ready to go, we'll all be plating up shortly. So um, about here we can run down what we're presenting today. It's going to be a wine dressed lamb with mountain pepper mash, barrelax, which is sugar and salt cured barramundi with rainforest herb linguine and wattle seed pavlova. So the last of the pavlova recipe is to grab at the edge of the towel and roll it up. And there's our pavlova log. We'll just trim it, serve it up. Benjamin, over to you. Looks great. Finishing off the veggies now. I just snow peas, broccoli, bit of, bit of oyster mushroom. Onto the plate. Mark, how are you doing? Great, mate. Just about finished. We've already got a guest there ready and waiting. How about we get in there? And I believe we also have a letter from a viewer. I might read that, Vic, I think. Get in on it, mate. I'll be there shortly. Me too. Vic, sort your dessert coming, won't be a second. Excellent. I might Thank just you. start with this letter. Ugh. This letter comes from Mary Patterson from London in England. She says, Dear Mark, I watch you every week and when I get the chance. When I don't, I tape the show. I catch most of the, the episodes. My husband loves the Aussie spices. He likes me to use them, but he feels they have a slightly burnt flavour. How can I adjust that? Uh, there's a little bit on the bottom I'd better read. Best wishes, Mary. P.S. Are you single? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Mary, the best thing to do with that, I feel, is um, just adjust your heat. Don't have your heat too hot. And with the, the flavours, add them at the end of the cooking process. That will eliminate all of these problems. 
Mark's cured barramundi is the feature of this dish and sits on top of the delicious rainforest herb linguine. The wine-drenched lamb which Ben prepared is tastefully complemented by the alpine pepper mashed potato and fruit sauce. And my wattle seed pavlova, contrasted with a sour fruit coolie, is my all-time favourite dessert. How's that for a collection of Australian food? This is fantastic. <laughs> That's the word we're looking for. Yeah. The recipes are on the website for these, plus the other dishes you saw on the show. Dig in, have Go a taste, ahead. certainly try the pavlova. You might want to even try that first, it's really good, not too sweet, so it won't spoil your appetite really? for the mains. <laughs> Here we are, turning international fusion cuisine upside down on Dining Down Under. <laughs>